It's like you rather arm teachers versus addressing the reason you feel they need to be armed in the first place. Do it cause I said that. Fold you with your legs back. Switch it like the doggies. Pull your hair, reveal your wig hat. That's I've been on. Bust all on your skin tone. Always on that freak. Just call me when your man gone. Steady talking about how you gon' ride it like a pony. I'ma need you to come on over here and show me. Try to cast amigo, got your body feeling on it. Check it for your man, cause that leave you lonely. Throw that back, let me show you who run it. Pulling out tricks, ain't nobody who done it. We ain't making love, we you love it. Nothing else on, just to count them in the bucket. All right, what we kicking it off with this week? What's hot in these blogs? Let's talk about Amanda Seals and this interview she did with Club Shay Shay, Shannon Sharp. Uh, Club Shay Shay is becoming like the, the go-to platform now, is, is growing in popularity. I heard the Cat Williams interview is the most viewed interview on YouTube ever. Like, that's major and so people want a piece of that people want a piece of that that network i guess but um the yeah, old jokes aside people go to shannon shop for that show and they want to you know get some things off their chest or whatever i watched pieces of the interview because the the thing is like three hours long and i'm like what like why is this so long <laughs> over three hours long so i watched I think the combination of videos I've watched probably equates to over an hour, maybe like an hour and a half of the interview. I got to finish the rest. But what I'm talking about today is the parts that I did actually see. One of them being the part where Amanda revealed that she was diagnosed with autism. And when I first seen it, it felt like this was like a self diagnosis type of situation she mentioned something about taking a test and i never thought that she actually got diagnosed by a by a, a doctor or clinician it felt like it was a self-diagnosis but a lot of people took that as she was diagnosed from a doctor so now when it was revealed i think maybe like the next day or something that it wasn't by a doctor and it was a self-diagnosis People began to go in on Amanda and a lot of it, I think a lot of it have to do with, for some reason, there's a this like hate train for Amanda Sills. And I'm not sure exactly like when it began, et cetera, but I feel like most of the people who are upset that she was self-diagnosed with autism are ones that already was on this hate train. And this just gave them more ammo to be able to like go in on her. I don't know what stop they got on on this train, but they've been on this train. And now here we are. And they are like, see, you are the problem. Like that's that's how it feels to me. I feel like I don't think it's like such a, a huge deal in terms of the whole like being like self diagnosed or whatever. I feel like doctors to determine if someone is um, autistic, they usually go based off the developmental history and the behavior of the person. So I feel like a test, as long as it's from like a reputable source where it'll provide you a series of questions based off of your history and answering these questions, if it determines that you may fall on the spectrum of autism, I don't see what's the big deal about that. I feel it is a spectrum at the end of the day. I don't think any two autism diagnoses are the same per se. And it doesn't have to be the most extreme case of autism for you to be on that spectrum. So I don't see what everybody's up in arms about really. At the end of the day, the doctors are just going to do probably something similar. They're probably going to ask you a series of questions. And based on your responses, they're going to determine, OK, yeah, you are not. They just got a degree to be able to officially say it. So I don't really see no difference. But that's who we are <laughs> with the, uh, Amanda Sales and her uh, self-diagnosis of this. But. 
I actually looked it up too. I looked up these tests. I looked up two of them, autism spectrum quotient. And they all have like 30 questions on them. Some of the questions, like I prefer to do things with others rather than on my own. And you choose whether you agree or disagree. Another question is, I prefer to do things the same way over and over again. Another one is, I frequently get so absorbed in one thing that I lose sight of other things. It's a bunch of different questions that you, you know you go through. You choose, you agree, you disagree. And at the end, they give you the score. And then you determine from that score based on their chart whether you may be on the spectrum or not. And it's not meant to be like a official diagnosis. You know, some people may take this test and then that may inspire them to actually go see a doctor, an actual doctor to, you know, see for sure. But I feel like a test online is not like such a horrible thing. I don't feel like Amanda is uh, being fairly, being attacked fairly based off the fact that she took a test and feels she's on the spectrum. But yeah, that interview was a lot. A lot of people was going in on Shannon Sharp based off of, it felt like it was a lot of undermining her, anything she said, but ultimately it seemed like they got to a good, good space in this interview. It seemed like it started off one way, but it ended up, you know, they seem cool, but then once the interview aired and the internet started internetting, and, and also some of the promo videos that Club Shay Shay put out, Amanda took issue with as well. Some of the headlines they put on some of the promo videos. So I think it's safe to say she won't be uh, calling Shannon up for lunch anytime soon or anything like that. Hey. You wanted to go on the show, so there we are. This is where we at with it. We're going to move on. What else hot in the blogs for this week? Uh, Megan Thee Stallion. It seems like lawsuits are the new come up these days. Everybody and their mother is filing lawsuits, and I'm just wondering, are the lawyers who are taking these suits, are like, is it like low? Because I, I thought it cost a good amount of money to file lawsuits. Like, are these lawyers taking it pro bono just because of the high profile individuals? Like, in, in hopes that, you know, is it where you don't got to pay unless we win for you? Because it's so many lawsuits being filed. And I'm just wondering, these people must got bread to just throw out there because there's never a guarantee that you're going to win what you're suing for. But here we are. We got another lawsuit on our hands. This time is a photographer that Megan used to work with. He has a lot of accusations in this lawsuit. He says that Megan called him out his name, called him a fat, B-I-T-C-H, told him at times to spit his food out, told him he don't need to be eating. These are things that he's alleging in this lawsuit. He's accusing her of creating a hostile work environment. He's accusing her of harassment and he's pointing out an incident that happened in Ibiza where he says that Megan and him was in an SUV with uh, two or three other women. And he said Megan began having relations with one of the women while he was sitting there. And I guess he feels forced to watch. And it was like so traumatic. Or, or something. <laughs> I don't know. When I, when I read this, I, it, felt, it felt like, and I should point out that he no longer works for Megan. He was actually terminated. And it feels like this is like a retaliation type of thing because he was terminated. You in a, that, I mean, to each his own, you may not be into that kind of thing. And even if you're not, I feel like Unless you're just like super like religious or just a prude, I don't feel like you would really feel that much of a way somebody getting it in right next to you, like in a car. You might be shocked, like, yo, y'all wild and like what y'all doing? But to to feel such a way that is like giving you the ick, 
like I, I don't know it just feels like something's not the math ain't mathing over here with that megan's lawyer actually responded to this complaint he said this is an employment claim for money with no sexual harassment claim filed and with salacious accusations and it's in an attempt to embarrass her we would deal with this in court alex spiro is megan's lawyer and that's their response and i could see it it being an employment claim for money and he just throwing that other stuff in there. Um, he's being represented by the same lawyer who is representing the dancers that was accusing Lizzo recently of um, harassment, hostile work environment. Apparently that's his thing. He, he uh, deals with like employment, employee issues. So we'll see, we'll see how this plays out um let's move on another thing that's hot in the blogs for this week is drake was forced to take down his second diss track towards kendrick lamar called taylor made freestyle when i first heard this i'm like how hope said it first the fat boys break up now every day i wake up somebody taking a diss song down on the internet <laughs> nah but um we know j cole removed his song from the internet well, by his own reasons, he he just felt, you know, it wasn't his, he didn't feel right doing it. But Drake, on the other hand, he used a AI-generated verse from Tupac and of Snoop Dogg. The Tupac estate said, ah, ah, <laughs> like, nah, we ain't, we ain't trying to hear that. And they sent Drake a cease and desist for him to remove the song. Well, from his Instagram, from his social media, because that's where he posted it at. And they in the cease and desist, the letter states, the state is deeply dismayed and disappointed by your unauthorized use of Tupac's voice and personality. Not only is the record a flagrant violation of Tupac's publicity and the estate's legal rights, it is also a blatant abuse of the legacy of one of the greatest hip hop artists of all time. The state would never have given its approval for this use and they gave drake 24 hours not only was they saying he needed to remove it they actually wanted him to explain how he did it too they even include kendrick lamar in the cease and desist itself they say the unauthorized equally dismaying use of tupac's voice against kendrick lamar a good friend to the estate who has given nothing but respect to tupac and his legacy publicly and privately compounds the insult they said a few years ago you yourself used the same california laws that you knowingly violated with your ai sound alike to challenge a much less publicized and far more benign use of your image on a specialized business website with a small audience i guess maybe uh drake felt they wouldn't have cared like i don't know i guess he felt it would have been a flex to have pog's voice on this record and kind of backfired. I guess Drake felt is not worth the the fight. So he took it down. But the thing is, we're talking about the internet here. Like, I don't care how much scrubbing you do, there's gonna be the song. It's still gonna be out there. Just as fast as it's down, somebody else probably just put it right back up. Not to mention everybody who already posted it how many times they posted it, the many people who downloaded it, et cetera. I mean, they're stopping it in its tracks at, in terms of it playing from Drake's social media, but at the end of the day, it's still out there. But I think this is a, uh, this is kind of a good first step in the, in the fight against AI and, you know, in terms of using people's likeness and voices, even though, this was Drake on his own, just complying with the lawsuit and not just, I mean, complying with the cease and desist and not just like trying to fight it. You may have some people that will go forward and fight it, but this hopefully will kind of make some people second guess when deciding to use artists, known artists, likeness and voice for their songs as it pertains to AI. We'll see how that plays out. But as of right now, 
Kendrick is still up. Everybody removing their stuff. No, what is it? No weapon formed against Kendrick shall prosper? Like, <laughs> I'm still looking forward to uh, Kendrick's response to all of this. I'm sure he's cooking up something. But yeah, we're going to move on. What else hot in these blogs? Uh, TikTok. We spoke about this last week. The ban, the bill to ban TikTok has officially passed in Congress and President Biden has signed it, which now gives ByteDance, the parent company, exactly one year to sell it. Find a new owner, aka sell it to the US, or risk being banned from all platforms, all apps, stores, etc. And when this first happened, I heard that they were actually bidders already, ready. Like, I think even um, Soldier Boy was even like, how much y'all want for it? I'll buy it because he's against them banning it or whatever. So I heard there's buyers on the market ready to buy it. But I'm thinking like, is TikTok even in the market to sell? Or would they just be like, I'm out of here, cut their ties. And an and attempt to make the people, the users of the app, the ones who feel the most way about it, to make them feel resentment towards the government for banning it. And I don't know, I may, I may be a little right here because they have said that they have no plans to sell the app and they rather just have it be banned. But at the same time, they are fighting it. They they planning to take it to court and appeal this whole situation. Someone said the algorithm of TikTok is the value and not the users. Lawmakers passed the ban law out of concern over ByteDance ties to China, including fear that ByteDance or TikTok could share data about U.S. users with China's government. And ByteDance always said that they would never do that. And they put in extra steps to like, you know, safeguard people's information and privacy. But who knows what the real deal is. I think even more than it being bent for them being, them possibly selling or sharing user data, I feel like just having control over what shows on the app, you know, um, speaking of like this person said, the algorithm, they have the ability to, you know, surface certain things more than others. I know there's a lot of Gen Z, that generation that occupy TikTok, and they learn a lot of information from TikTok. I've literally seen comments from people like I've learned more on TikTok than I did in school, which is a little crazy. But a lot of people are learning a lot of things from TikTok and it could be good and bad because the same way they, there is factual things, there's a lot of things that may not be true, that may not be proven. and information is information be it good or bad and too much of it could be harmful especially if it's not the 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 correct information so i think a lot of these apps should do more in combating that they do they do a good job at banning things that or blocking and removing videos that probably shouldn't be removed they really should focus on weeding out misinformation. I think that's a bigger issue when it comes to uh, TikTok because it is addictive. I know some people who spend hours and hours and it's just swipe, swipe, swipe. And the way the algorithm work, the algorithm is going to show you what they think you like to watch. So if you watch three videos on the war, they're going to say, oh, you know what? This person likes this. I'm going to feed them. Every time they open this app, it's going to be something regarding this war. Or whatever it is you're watching, whether it's bunnies, puppies, cats, whatever it is, they're going to show you more of that because they think that's what you want to see. 
So you could get lost and you could go down this rabbit hole of information. And if you're just taking it for face value, what you're seeing and not doing your own research outside of the app to determine truths from untruths, it could be a problem. So for that reason, I, I, I feel like there should be like, you know, some kind of regulation, but the U.S. feels is about data and sharing data with uh, China. But we'll see. Someone pointed out Trump tried to ban it and it would have been worse. Now he says no ban. Absolutely. He definitely did. He definitely tried to ban it. And in true Trump fashion, he sees now the reactions and, and just, to, just to be the op, right? I said this a few weeks ago. He's the ultimate op. Just to be the op, the fact that uh, Biden's administration and everybody's like on board with the ban, he want to be against the ban. And his goal is to get these people who fill away that is banned to get them to maybe vote for him instead. And I don't know the way these uh, minds are these days and how gullible and how easily influenced people are. It may just work. It may just work. Scary. Scary times. All I can say is yikes. I think that's it for that. We're going to move on. Last but not least, what's hot in these blogs? This, time, this is going to tie into my what blows for the week. And is this new law that was just passed in Tennessee, this new bill that's going to allow teachers to carry guns in public schools. And when uh, looking into this bill, I've learned that this is not the first time. Tennessee actually is now the 34th state to allow teachers to carry guns with administrator approval and some training. You know, a lot of bills and stuff pass when we're not looking, when we're like debating about whether TikTok should be banned or not. Like a lot of bills like this are being passed. I did not know all these other states have a similar thing in, in play. And we know the reason is because violence is an issue here in this country. Uh, mass shootings are a big issue here in this country, more than anywhere else. And so whenever one happens, a lot of people run to like, you know, try to get some kind of gun reform, you know, try to call for like stricter background um, checks and, you know, just to try to make it a little harder because it seems too easy to get uh, a, a weapon these days. So this is the lawmakers, I guess they feel the, the answer to arm the teachers. It's like you rather arm teachers versus addressing the reason you feel they need to be armed in the first place, which is kind of wild. There's been over, I want to say last year in uh, 2023, it was over 600 um, mass shootings. 38 of them were in a school. This year alone has been over 100, I want to say, I've read. And 13 of them has been involved in schools. And the bills, they're kind of mixed. You got... Obviously, you know who's going to be for it. And then you got people who are against it. This guy named Kenneth Trump, who is the president of National School Safety and Security Services. They are a consultant firm that works with schools on uh, security strategies. And he said that uh, he doesn't believe 40 hours is enough time to appropriately train teachers to respond in a school. And I agree. That's a week. Eight hours a day for a week. And, and that's supposed to be enough time for them to be able to move and shake in a live situation. I feel like what would be a better response instead of just arming teachers because they took a week long video class and some went to the range. I think they should maybe put more security in the schools. Like, hire more armed security guards that way is like 
concentrated to people who actually, you know, are trained officially to handle situations like this. They are generally the ones at the front line of the schools. Like they're generally at the, the entrances and stuff like that. Like maybe, maybe do that versus putting things in the, in the teacher's hands. Yeah, I don't know. This ain't this ain't really. This ain't really it. Someone said more to cure violence has never been the issue. Regulation is the answer. That part. Because that's in a nutshell, essentially what y'all doing. Y'all just putting more out there. Like, that's not that's not the answer here. But yeah, what y'all think? Is this the answer? Armin teaches? Should this be? Or how do y'all feel? Uh, the United States should go about this. Let me know. But yeah, that is going to conclude what's hot in the blogs for this week.